carve up something good for this project, time to get to it. Today I'm going to be making one of these. Well, not this sheet of paper, but I'm going to be making a giant styrofoam jack-o'-lantern. To start, I'll first need to make a template on this sheet of plywood. I marked out how wide I want the pumpkin to be with these two lines. I'm going to use my projector to project my design onto the plywood and trace it out with a marker. I'll be using these and more scrap styrofoam to make this project. Next I'll draw lines on my template that match the heights of the pieces of scrap styrofoam. This will give me the measurements for how to cut the foam to what I'll need. Now I'll cut out a piece of plywood that'll be the base of the pumpkin. With the sheet of plywood cut, I'll now cut out the base piece of styrofoam. Using my template, I measure what diameter I'll need to make this piece of styrofoam the correct size. Since this prop will likely be outside and exposed to the elements, I need to make sure that the end product doesn't have any styrofoam that is exposed to the open air and everything is completely sealed. This means that I need to embed some PVC tubes into the base so that I can run some wires into the jack-o'-lantern. That way I'll have a durable opening all the way through the base and the PVC will protect the foam from any moisture. The glue that I'm using is a lavender foam glue made by 3M. It can be purchased with an activator that basically makes this a contact cement for foam. Once the two sides are pressed together, the bond is almost instant. I'm not sponsored by any of the products I mentioned throughout this entire video, it's just what I'm using. Next I'm going to backfill the space around the PVC to lock it into place. With that done, I'll cut out some templates out of cardboard, start cutting out pieces of styrofoam, and begin assembling the blank for the pumpkin. I didn't have two pieces of foam that were the same height, so I'll just add this thin piece to one side to level them out. Time to start gluing the parts together to make the bottom half of the pumpkin. I tried to draw the shape that I wanted for this pumpkin, but I didn't like how it looked. So I went a different way, and I got something that I like better. That's looking much better. For this next bit, I'll be using a wire wheel on an angle grinder to rough out the shape of the pumpkin. Though the particles that go flying are big, I'm not taking any chances, and I'll be wearing this face mask anytime I use the wire wheel. Next, I'll be using a curio brush to smooth out the roughness from the wire wheel. I'll also be using a grinding disc that normally goes on an angle grinder to smooth things out even further than what the curio brush can do.
With the bottom half roughed out, next I'll be starting on assembling the blank for the top half. I'm going to assemble the parts for the top half while they're sitting on the bottom half. This way I won't run the risk of accidentally making the two halves different sizes. With the top half mostly assembled, the next thing that I'll do is use expansion foam to fill any gaps between the different parts. So, I made a bit of a goof on this part. When I was assembling the base, I was a bit excited to finally be working on this project, and I accidentally forgot to embed T-nuts into the base. Since I couldn't take anything apart to correct this, I just had to add these little feet to the base with the T-nuts in them. Next, I'm going to finish building up the blank for the top half of the pumpkin. Now that I have all the parts glued on, it's time to start shaping the top half of this beast. With the top half roughed out, I can now start work on making the stem. I started by taking a thin sheet of styrofoam to make something that fit properly into the space that I had available. I then carved the rest of the stem based on that starting piece.
At first I didn't like how the stem turned out, but over time, you could say it grew on me. Next I'm going to make a wooden base that will go around the PVC tube that I embedded into the foam. This way there will be something solid around where I will eventually be installing a light. I didn't like how the first line looked, so I took another crack at it. Now it's time to shape the inside of the bottom of the pumpkin. Now that I roughed out the inside with the wire wheel, it's back to the curio brush to smooth things out a bit. With the inside of the bottom carved out, I'll need to make a template of the shape. This way I can transfer it to the top and have a general idea of how to carve it so that the two halves will be close to matching. With the template traced onto the foam, I can start carving out the inside of the top half. Next I'm going to add some foam around the piece of wood that I added and blend everything together. Now I'm going to use some fast set onyx from Smooth On to seal up the inside and hopefully make everything watertight. While the onyx hardens fully, I'll take this opportunity to use a grinding disc on my angle grinder to shape the piece of wood that I used for the base of the pumpkin and blend it into the foam.
With that done, the onyx has fully cured and I can sand it down and add a second coat. So, I made another boo-boo. In my haste, I ended up hard coating the inside of the pumpkin with the onyx before I cut out the face of the jack-o'-lantern. Since I did this this way, I now have to get through the styrofoam as well as the hard coat that's on the inside of the pumpkin. Carving out the face of the pumpkin was a bit difficult for me. The foam is thicker than the length of the hot knife that I'm using. I have a longer blade, but all of my stuff got moved a year prior and I don't know where it ended up. I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to get this done. I even tried thinning the foam from the inside, but that didn't really help. Then, tragedy. Well, nothing to do but go home and spend a few days playing video games, relaxing, and coming up with a solution. What I eventually remembered was that there were little pointy saw blades with handles at the hardware store that would allow me to finish the cut I started with the hot knife. I went and picked one up, glued everything back together, and got to it. With the repairs done, I took a little bit of a breather and did some sanding to get everything to look a little bit better. Before I get back to working on the face of the pumpkin, which admittedly was stressing me out a bit, I figured that I'd test my new saw blade on something a little less visible, in case things didn't work out right with it. Success! So much of a success actually that I just let the pumpkin fall over and I didn't even notice that I did that until I started editing the video. Well, since that worked out so perfectly, time to get back to working on the face. I used the wire wheel to clear the onyx out of the way and used the curio brush to smooth things out a bit. Now it's time for the main event. Permanently gluing the two halves together. If I don't line them up properly, they'll be stuck that way for forever. When I shaped the top half, I intentionally left it a little bit bigger or a bit proud of the bottom half. That way, once they were glued together, I could sand the top half down to the size of the bottom half and hopefully get them to blend seamlessly. Now to cut out the rest of the face. Wish me luck! With the face fully cut out, I decided to flatten the face a bit so that it would look good from different angles other than looking at it straight on. After I finished work on the outside, it's time to work on the inside. The seam for the two halves came together in a bit of a point, and I used the curio brush to round them out into a nice smooth arc.
time to fix another mistake. It seems like I'm doing that a lot on this project. A little hot glue, and it's all good. The last major step in me shaping the pumpkin was to add a little bit of extra detail. This was a bit nerve-wracking because if I didn't like it, there was no going back. So I started on the back. That way if I hated it, it wouldn't be on the side that was facing the public. With the final bit of shaping done, it's time to fill in any defects or imperfections with plaster. Once the plaster cures, I'll sand it down and it'll be almost ready for hard coat. I coated the lid of the pumpkin in onyx because it's a complex shape and I wanted to make sure that it was completely sealed before I brought it to the hard coater. This way he won't have to stress on getting every little spot covered. Next I'm going to be making some mounting hardware for the pumpkin lid. This way it will be able to be bolted down and it won't be able to grow legs and run off of a guest that has sticky fingers. Basically there will be tabs that stick out of the pumpkin that the lid will sit on. The lid will have blocks of wood embedded into it that will have T-nuts built in so that it can be bolted down. I used more onyx to lock the pieces of wood into place in the lid. I also used onyx to lock the tabs into place in the pumpkin. The last step before hard coating is to get the inside fully sealed with a layer of onyx. Because of the shape of the pumpkin and how the hard coat is sprayed, there is no effective way for the hard coater to fully spray the inside of the pumpkin and to have it be protected from the elements. Additionally, the inside doesn't need to be as durable as the exterior because inherently it won't be subject to as much abuse as the outside. I also coated the details of the face in onyx just to ensure that everything will be sealed. Finally, the home stretch. Time for paint. The hard coder denied being recorded for my video, and respecting his request, I didn't do any recording at his shop. I don't have much to add for the next few minutes because it's just me painting stuff. The hard coat that I used is polyurea, and basically nothing sticks to it. 
I've tried several different types of primers and nothing sticks. Eventually I found that this plastic primer from rust does an okay job. I brushed the primer on because it's oil-based and I'm just not a fan of cleaning oil-based paints out of my spray guns as well as I want this coat of paint to be very heavy. It's also sold in the spray can and I only used that when I felt it was necessary. With that, there really isn't much else for me to say, so I'll check in with everyone at the reveal. And there he is. Like many of my projects, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And now, I have an amusement park quality giant jack-o'-lantern that's mine, and I made it. I think that I'm going to make a different giant pumpkin once a year for Halloween. A couple little notes that I want to make is that the hard coater laid the polyurion really thick, so this thing is super durable. I could hit it with a baseball bat as hard as I could, and it would just laugh at me. Next, I just want to say that if the paint job looks a little flat, you're right. 
I'm going to be reaching out to an airbrush artist to help me add some depth to the paint job. I just didn't want to attempt it on my own without guidance. More than likely, I would have made it look like tiger stripes or something and have to repaint the whole thing all over again. Lastly, I don't really do stuff like this, but leave a suggestion for a name for this pumpkin in the comments below, and I'll reveal what name got picked at the end of next year's giant jack-o'-lantern video. Overall, I'm super pleased with how this project turned out. It's almost a bit emotional for me looking at it all finished. At the time of finishing the edit on this video, I've been working on this project on and off for over a month. I've had to go through and edit over 40 hours of footage with multiple camera angles, so apologies for this video being much longer than my usual video. With that said, I'll see you in the next one, and have a safe and happy Halloween. Ha 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 